Hi folks, now do you recognize this janky contraption? Well, this is my so-called temporary blasting cabinet. Now I made this way back to uh, start with the glass blasting for Aquacaris and I've been using it ever since. And it is long overdue a proper overhaul. In fact, I wasn't really supposed to be continuing to use it for as long as I have. I was actually gonna make a full on metal version, but everything sort of got in the way. We had the machine breakage, uh, we had the sort of pandemic just ruin everything. Uh, so in the meantime, I've just continued using it. And amazingly, it has done a pretty good job. So I think this is going to be quite an interesting little update upgrade because I'm actually going to be keeping it in another cardboard box. And I thought it would make a quite a fun video because actually this is the sort of thing you can do quite easily at home if you want to have access to glass blasting and sand blasting but you don't have a lot of space. So my workshop is actually pretty tiny and if you had maybe a garage or something like that where you don't have a lot of space for a full-on blast cabinet, so for instance I was looking online and they're either huge or just a little bit too small for most of the jobs that I want to do. So I kind of meant that I had to make one. Now the problem with making one is that actually they're kind of complicated things to make. They look pretty simple off the face of it, but the more you kind of look into it, the more features you want to add, and then the whole scale of it blows up a little bit. So this is actually a really good temporary measure which allows you to work out exactly what you need. Then you can commit to doing a full one out of something like aluminium, steel, wood, etc. So that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing. But firstly, let's just have a quick tour inside of this thing because it is an absolute mess. Come on, come on. So as you can see, most of it's made from a 60 by 45 centimeter sort of removal box. And my lid is actually a Corsair 1000D side panel. That has some insane tinting on it. Now the problem with that is that I need a heck of a lot of lighting on the inside, otherwise I can't really see anything. Now I've since moved to an acrylic panel, which works an awful lot better. And that's what I'm gonna be using in the updated version. But if we take a look inside as well, there's a whole host of issues. Now I think you'd be kidding yourself if you didn't expect this to happen. So of course, if you're gonna be using blasting media inside a cardboard box, you can expect it to eat away at the cardboard itself. I'm actually quite amazed that it's lasted as long as it has. Um, I've been using this for months now and it's only really stripped the top layer. Now obviously this isn't ideal. I've, I've got this extra panel in here and this has been helping a little bit, but you can see that gets pretty mashed up by both the, you know, the gun here, which hits the side and also the material just gets stripped off this part here has really gone right the way, almost to the other side now. On this side over here as well, things are getting crunched. So this is again from the gun itself. You can see from the air here. And the issue of course is that eventually that's gonna break through, sand is gonna go everywhere and you sort of undo the point of having an enclosure at that point. Similarly, one thing that hasn't been great is you might be able to see it here in the sand, but this stuff does of course flake off over time. And when that flakes off, it gets into the media and then of course then it gets blasted as well. And that's definitely not ideal. You really don't want to be doing that. You want to keep it as pure as you possibly can. Otherwise you end up having to replace it. But aside from that, it's been pretty decent. I've managed to do some pretty large stuff in here. So in terms of upgrading it, I think what I'm actually gonna do is largely keep the cardboard structure, but instead maybe use some scrap material that I've got just to brace the back the floor and then this side. This side is actually in perfect nick pretty much because I don't blast in that direction. So that's pretty good. And the same goes for this side. So what I've done here is I've recently popped in some Fantex LED strips. And I think I'm gonna keep that idea because those are pretty good and maybe run some along this side as well. That way I can have a little bit more lighting inside the box itself. And that's pretty cool so I can run those out. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a bunch of 3D printed adapters that will help keep things like these. So this is the media hose down here, if it focuses. And then this is the air hose. So I want these, which are currently just sort of sealed off with a bit of tape. I want those to have a proper adapter and that will keep that part of the box nicely sealed. Now, a big issue here, of course, as well, is all this sand, because I haven't really got a good way of taking this out of the box. Now on a proper one, you have like a V shape on the bottom and it all funnels it down into the middle and puts it straight back into another container. I can't really do that with this particular shape and if I added one, I'd actually lose an awful lot of height and that would make it quite difficult for me. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna have an opening around over 
here also. That should help me funnel things out of the box without having to use a scoop and essentially take it from that into a bucket. But with that all said and done, let's just take this the whole thing apart and I can show you exactly what you need to be able to make your own setup at home. Now, before we get stuck into the items on the table, I just want to apologize in case there's any kind of big booming sounds in the background. I'm filming this on the 5th of November, so Guy Fawkes night. So, of course, there's loads of fireworks going off in the neighbors, no less. I'll give it a few seconds and I'll come back to it. One eternity later. Okay, they seem to have stopped for a while. Let's see how far we can get before it starts up again. Now, if you want to build a setup yourself, these are the items you're going to have to purchase. And I'm gonna have links to all these in the description as well. But the first thing you need to sort out is the compressor, because that, of course, is the vital piece of equipment in all of this. And it does need to be quite a beefy one, I'm afraid, because glass blasting uses a lot of air. You're gonna need a compressor with not only a large tank volume, but also a high free air rating. So in fact, my compressor, which is a Swan Silent one, uh, even that one, as beefy as it is for the CNC, can't really deliver enough free air for this particular system. It kind of stutters out after a few seconds of use at full pressure. So what you're gonna to want to have is a large compressor that can reliably deliver that free air. So first things first, you have your media blasting gun. And I've got a fairly simple one here from Clark, and I got this from Machine Mart. It's a very simple device. You basically just have your gun here. It has a tube which then goes into the media, and then you connect it to your air supply. Now to do that, I've got this coiled hose, and this is kind of a cheap, regular hose. I find this works incredibly well, because if you're in inside an enclosed space, you actually want to be able to have flexibility, and having another stiff hose like this one already in there, it makes it quite difficult to maneuver the uh, gun to the shapes that you want it to be at, because you generally want to be spraying at 90 degrees to your surface. So actually I found having one like this is really handy. Now what I've gone and done is I've taken some uh, quick disconnect fittings and put it onto either end so I can easily connect it to the gun. And then on this side, I have a bayonet so that I can connect it to a reel. So I've gone and taken this reel and put it on the wall of the workshop. And then if we take it out, I basically pull it out, connect it, and now I've got fresh air supply. And then afterwards, I can just disconnect it and reel it back. So it's a really handy one if you haven't got much space like me. The next essential item are these, which are your blasting. The next essential items are these. And these are the blasting gloves. Now I got these on Amazon and they're pretty good actually. The only main issue is the fact that you do lose a bit of dexterity. So if you can get some slightly smaller ones that fit your hands well, that's what I would recommend. But these haven't been that bad um, and they have at least kept me nice and safe. Now, the way that they work is they basically have these plastic rings here and you put these into the uh, box or your enclosure and then they seal it up with this sort of rubber seal on the side here and then you screw them together. And that should keep all the sand inside the enclosure. Now the handy thing about that is obviously it makes it a lot easier to keep everything enclosed and you're gonna need these to be able to interface with the gun and everything on the inside of the enclosure. And these are basically the essential items. There aren't that many other things that you need to get going. Obviously you're gonna have your cardboard box for your homemade enclosure and I'll go into some more details about that in a moment when I show you how I'm gonna be handling it. Now there's one additional thing which is pretty useful and that is having some LED strips. Now these are the Fantex ones that came with my controller that I've been using for some of the other parts recently. So I'm just repurposing these for the inside of the box because they work quite nicely. They're kind of flexible, they have good color, easy control from the controller. And then also the other handy thing is that they're properly sealed up with rubber so they're not gonna necessarily disintegrate from all the glass around the outside of it. But having these is a good idea because then it means that you don't have to rely on the light kind of bouncing inside. And of course, if you're inside an enclosure, it's probably gonna be quite dark and you want to be able to see the part you're working with. So some LEDs are a really good idea. Now I'd just go and grab some cheap white ones from Amazon, maybe with a switch. Keep it as simple as you possibly can, maybe USB powered. You don't really want to have to be fussing around with lots of controllers and things if you can help it. I've always got one hooked up anyway, so I'm using these ones for that reason. But in my view, for something like this, keep it as simple as you possibly can. Mains powered will be really good. Now I did say that I wanted to spruce up this box and make it a little bit more robust. And to do that, I've 3D printed these little gubbins. So these are basically quality of life improvements that should make things a little bit easier to use and more durable at the same time. So for instance, we have this little sliding door here. 
And basically this will sit on the front and allow me to scoop out all of my material just with opening the door and shutting it and to prevent anything from coming out thanks to this big lip over here. Similarly, we've got ourselves a quick disconnect system. Now I have one of these already in the box, but the problem is the tube comes out of the side and that gets messy and I have to have a seal and it's a bit of a problem. So to get around that, I printed off this. Now basically this thing here fits into these parts here like so. And then that allows this system to be kept nice and neat with a flange here. And then that's all secured with this locking ring. And on the inside of this ring, there's a sort of a zip tie feature over here. And that will keep it all nicely, firmly held against the side of the box. Similarly, this little one over here fits into a G1 quarter port. So I'm going to put that into a bulkhead fitting. And that will allow the wires for the LEDs to come in and out of the box. And hopefully, basically letting through no sand through this tiny little hole. Now, these parts over here are quite handy. So these are going to be making the lip of the box a bit more durable. So these corner pieces basically slot onto the side and then these pieces over here slot in like so. You'll notice there's a bit of a line going down the middle here and that is actually a groove for an o-ring because I'm expecting this not really to line up and be extra flat or anything like that. As a result there will be little gaps. Now I don't really want gaps because that means sand just pours all the way through and gets all over the workshop. So to mitigate that, I'm going to be putting an O-ring in there and that should just help seal it up against the plastic on the top and keep things inside. Now I'm going to be having links to all these parts in the description. I'm going to be making special parametric versions so that you can change the sizes very easily to fit whatever box or system that you're going to be using at home so you can print them more easily. But with that all said and done, I think it's about time we fitted all this stuff to the box and check out if it actually works. Now to get around the cardboard just generally being pretty weak stuff, I had to dig around the workshop to find some off cuts and spare materials that I can potentially line some of the sides with. So after digging around, I came up with this stuff. So this is stuff that I had to hand. This is some uh, five millimeter acrylic and it's this glossy black. Now, I've had this for a long time and because I don't tend to use glossy materials because they scratch very easily and end up not looking very good, which as you can see has happened to this one, believe it or not, it is exactly the right size. So obviously this is probably what I thought was the right size for my machine at the time. So it lines up rather nicely. And then for the sides, as chance would have it, I have some aluminium and this is 1.5 millimeter aluminium. And I don't tend to cut this stuff any longer actually. Um, I find that because it's so thin, it's actually quite difficult to clamp down and it almost always comes bowed like this and that becomes a bit of a problem. So actually I don't mind basically sacrificing this. And again, look at that. It is exactly the right size that I need it to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one of these sides just slotting in on the back here and then the other side, because obviously it's a lot smaller, I'm just going to bend it along. So rather than cutting it to size, I'm just gonna bend it using my brake. And then that should help keep everything nice and tight and be the simplest possible way of lining it all. And then into that, I'm just gonna cut a little hole which will allow the various adapters that I've designed to fit in. And it should be as simple as that. So that's what we're gonna get on to doing right now.
Well, everybody, say hello to the newest member of the team, Rocky the Blasting Cabinet. Now, he might have the face of a cardboard box, but he has the heart of a steel armoured crate. Because inside, he is armoured with aluminium panels, so it should be a little bit more durable, along with acrylic for the floor, full RGB lighting so that you can see on the inside, and that means I should be able to film the blasting process now, which should be good fun. And additionally, we've also got a nice proper seal provided by the o-ring on the inside here. And that should help keep all the sand inside. The little mouth will help make it a lot easier to get all the sand from the inside back out. And then in a future one, when I do a proper metal version, I'll try and work that into the shape itself. But for now, this should do, and it should be a lot better than what I used to use, which is this. And that was a bad solution. I had thought that I could just tip the box out, but of course, it's about 20 kilos of media when you're in there, so I just resorted to using one of these cut measures instead, which was okay. No, I, I lie, it wasn't okay at all. It was an absolute faff, so I'm very glad I'm not gonna be having to do that anymore, hopefully. Instead, I can just be able to use like a squeegee or something and just push it out and put it up the bucket directly underneath on a hook. And that should be a lot quicker. Now, as I mentioned, if you'd like to make your own Rocky, you can, of course, download the 3D files from the GrabCAD link below. And I have gone through the extra effort of making sure that they are properly parametric to a degree. So you should be able to just enter in the dimensions of your box and things like that. And then it should do a lot of the calculation for you. You will want to double check things and also things like your printer setup and all that will affect things like that. But it should be pretty robust and fairly straightforward. Now Rocky's first adventure is going to be doing the backplate for Ensis. Now I was waiting for some special M2 screws to arrive for that because I need to mount it directly to the card itself. I also needed more aluminium to arrive as well as a boatload of acrylic that's going to be used in the next parts. That's now arrived. I'm just waiting for the aluminium and the screws, but that should arrive in the next couple of days. So that should be the next proper modding video. And we'll get to see Rocky in action, as well as some really cool stuff. Now, of course, you wouldn't want to miss any of the updates on that now, would you? And of course, the best way to stay in the loop is by subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And also you can find us over on Facebook, Instagram, builds.gg and Twitter. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, don't forget to pop by our merchandise store linked below and see if anything strikes your fancy. Take care, folks. Stay safe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.